guys, and welcome back to the Booth Customs channel. I am your host, Austin, AKA the Goon Prepper. And today, we're gonna to be talking about this boy right here. And I'm not talking about uh, that, I'm talking about my belt. But before we get started, let's, uh, let's get this to where we can actually see it, shall we? So, without further ado, some movie magic. Hey, it worked. Well, that's a first, but anyway. Uh, this is still loaded out and it's gonna be difficult to talk about just the belt with all this crap on there Maybe I'll do a belt setup video a little bit later today. We're just talking about the belt So let's try that again. Shall we? Here goes nothing Hmm Well Third time's a charm Hey, what do you know? Man, I wish I knew about that uh, when I was loading the belt. Although it might not work putting all of this stuff back on it. Hmm. That's a, uh, that's a problem for Austin in the future. That's not a problem for Austin right now. So let's get into this now that we got our belt all nice and naked for us and uh, ready for review. All right, so disclaimer number one. Uh, Booth Customs is in no way affiliated with Ferro Concepts. This is the Ferro Concepts Bison Belt. Uh, I am a Montanan, and as such, Ferro Concepts does hold a special place in my heart, as they are, in fact, a Montana brand. But no affiliation, only a slight bias, just because, you know, Montanans gotta stick together. There's not that many of us. Disclaimer number two, I am a civilian. Uh, I am not high speed, never done any of that. This belt has been used at the range. As such, this is a review of a civilian's use of this belt. I've had it for about a year, and in that year I've put a couple weeks worth of range time on it. So it hasn't been used and abused. But that's all I got for you guys. I know what I like about this belt, I know what I dislike about it, Disclaimer one and two out of the way. Let's get into it. But before we get into it, quick word from our sponsors. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into this review. The Ferro Concepts Bison Belt is an eight ounce battle belt. Very, very lightweight. It is a two piece, which means you've got an inner belt and an outer belt. They're connected via hook and loop. Sorry, sound warning guys connected via hook and loop on the inside. The outer belt has a cobra buckle, which is nice. I feel like that's industry standard anymore. But the inner belt, this is interesting. The inner belt has a little loop where this metal tab slides into for closure. That makes donning and doffing really, really easy and quick. No belt folding in on itself, straps, Velcro, none of that, just and you're good to go. Um, the outer belt is two inches wide. The inner belt, as you can probably see, is an inch and a half wide. So you do have a little bit of space where that hook is exposed. So it might catch your pants. The belt is reinforced with some exposed Tegris here. It is not IR reflective, as is normal with Tegris. It looks like it would reflect, but it doesn't. And also, once this belt's kitted up, all of that Tegris is covered up anyway, so if you don't really like the look of the exposed Tegris, which I think is kind of cool, that won't be a problem for you if you actually have your belt loaded out. It is external Molly only. There are no internal Molly loops like you would have with, say, the T-Rex arms belt. And it is only able to accept vertical attachments. It doesn't have the ability to do uh, diagonal Molly attachments, which I think there's only a handful of belts that even are trying to do something like that. So for me, I don't have a whole lot of, of stuff in the front of my belt, so I don't really care. So if you're one of those high speed guys who does all the gun competitions and you like to have your mags angled for quick access, you're gonna need a special mag holder for that because this can only do vertical. Um, it is made in the USA by a Montana company. Uh, can't go wrong with that if you ask me. But like I said, I am a little biased towards Montanas. So that's the facts. Let's get into my impression of this. 
when I, so I've had this belt for about a year now. And when I first got the belt, I thought I got an empty box. Honest guys, I thought the box was empty. I thought I'd been scammed because this belt is stupid light. It's eight ounces, but I guarantee you that eight ounces is essentially your Cobra buckle. The rest of this, there is nothing to it. It feels like air. So if you're trying to cut down on weight, guys, this belt is awesome. It will definitely cut down on weight for you. Um, it's very rigid though, in spite of its, its weight or lack thereof. And uh, just to kind of give you guys a demonstration of that, I've had this belt loaded for a year straight. I haven't taken any of the attachments off. And while I've only used the belt maybe a, essentially a week's worth of use in a, in a span of a year, which admittedly isn't much, but you would think after 14 days worth of use, there would be a little bit more curvature inside of this belt. And as you can see, the Tegris is still very rigid. There's not a whole lot of curve, vertical curve here. So clearly it's rigid enough to stand up stand up to some use for a while. Uh, I know there's guys out there who have really used and abused these things and they don't have any complaints for the rigidity and the structure of the belt. So that's a nice feature. I noticed that I don't have any pulls in the stitching. Everything still looks rock solid. Everything was still handling rock solid. I didn't have a whole lot of wiggle. The only thing I did have wiggle on is my Safari Land holster. Uh, it is a two and a quarter inch loop, and this is a two inch belt, so you do have a little bit of play there, something to be aware of. And since this belt is so incredibly sound warning, guys, since this belt is so thin, uh, it's not gonna fill out a Safari Land holsters um, loop. You are gonna have a little bit of play there. So you're gonna rely on either some kind of stitching or Another way of, of really cinching that down, for me, I used ranger bands and then I relied on the hook and loop to do the rest for me, which it did. It did very well. It's comfortable. It's not incredibly comfortable, but it is comfortable. I've worn a couple of belts, none that are high end, just being honest. And this is the most comfortable one I've worn. Coming from a background of construction, I'm used to wearing belts around my waist. Uh, I did construction in high school for a few years, and I'm used to having weight around my waist. Um, unfortunately, all on the sides and the back though, you know, it, it, that is what it is. But anyway, I digress. I'm used to carrying a belt that has some weight to it. And as such, I know what a really good, comfortable belt can mean on your hips, your legs, your back, and this, it has not caused any problems to me, uh, for me at all. So that's a nice feature. There is one thing that I can't say I really love about the belt, and I touched on it earlier, and that is the exposed Velcro. So as I said before, this is a two inch belt, but the Velcro is only one and a half, or the, uh, the inner belt, pardon, is only an inch and a half wide. And because of that, you do have exposed hook. That will tear up your clothes depending on what you're wearing. I wear a lot of jeans, so you know, I kind of got some rough spots underneath where my belt normally sits. Uh, and if they had a belt that was the same width as the, an inner belt that was the same width as the outer belt, uh, you'd still be able to fit your normal belt loops. But I understand why they were doing it. A lot of hipster clothes don't have big belt loops. You gotta play in the hand you're dealt honestly. So that's a small gripe, but that is the only gripe that I really have with this. Otherwise, I love it. It's a great belt. Now, something to be aware of. <clears throat> it's expensive, guys. It's one of the more expensive belts on the market. And when it comes to the durability, the comfort, the uh, weight, and the rigidity, I think it's probably worth the money that you pay for it. However, if you're like me and you are just a range bunny and you don't spend weeks on end in your kit, if you're not really using and abusing it, paying uh, right now MSRP is $215, paying $215 for a belt that you're only going to use at the range might be a little hard to justify. So 
take that how you will. But that being said, in spite of the price, I really do think this belt is worth it. Like I said, I haven't used and abused it, but there are guys who have. So final thoughts. If you need a battle belt that is stupid, stupid light and really rigid, highly recommend this. I cannot recommend it enough. That is not the Montana bias talking, but there is Montana bias there. So <laughs> um, check them out, guys. I highly recommend Ferro Concepts in general. I know a lot of friends who have their kit and their gear and they have no complaints. It's rugged, it's durable, it holds up. It's made to last and it's made to be abused. So if you can handle the price, I recommend this belt. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Please drop a like, a comment. If you agree, disagree, have experience with this belt or another belt, think that we're just dumb. We are. We know. Uh, but tell us anyway, please. Um, we love looking through those comments and seeing what you guys all have to say. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it reminds the YouTube algorithm that we do, in fact, have a voice and that the 2A boys are a lot harder to silence than they think we are. But that's all for now. Come back next week for another video from Booth yeah. Customs. Uh, money made the world go round. I'm trying to get it all right now. Yeah.